Hello everyone and welcome back to the finals of the Grand Chess Tour. Again, it's Levon Aronian versus uh, Magnus Carlsen. So in the first game, Magnus took the lead by winning the game and that means six points uh, for him as a win in the classical time format is uh, uh, counted for six. And now Levon should really, really uh, equalize and <laughs> or otherwise it's going to be really hard to get back into the match. Uh, I will just repeat it a few more times uh, because a win in the rapid time format is four points and the win in the blitz is only two points. So... Uh, as he already lost one game in the classical, he should really win one game in the classical. That being said, do be a part of the subscribers video 2020. All the information you need about that will be in the description below, uh, which I'm sure you already know, but just in case. So without further ado, uh, let's check out a nice photo uh, before the match. Here it is. Uh, this young girl uh, does the first move for Levon. And uh, this time it's d4 and Levon leaves it on the board. It's hard to say if Levon was actually planning to play d4 or he just uh, didn't want to, uh, you know, um, play, play, play another move. But uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, he, he was going to play d4. So that being said, uh, let's check out the game. Uh, d4 by Levon uh, and knight to f6 by Magnus. We have c4, g6 and now f3. Uh, we have knight, uh, knight to c6 by Magnus uh, inviting d5. Levon goes for it. We have d5 and now knight to e5 and now e4. So uh, the king's Indian defense, uh, we have d6 and now knight to c3 by Levon. We have bishop to g7 and now uh, ex uh, going even further with the pawn, we have f4, pushing the knight back and now bishop to e3. So this has all been played before, nothing new here, we have castles by Magnus and bishop to e2. We have e6, challenging Levon's uh, strong center. We have uh, d captures on e6, f captures on e6. And now there is one game from the Russian Championship from this year, Fedosev versus, uh, 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 sorry, uh, Tryapishko. Uh, Fedosev versus Tryapishko, where a knight to h3 was played and Fedosev was able to win that game. But here we have h4 by 11, which is a new move in the position. So already as of move 11, we have a completely new game. Uh, so let's see how Carlsen deals with this. He goes for b5, which uh, probably one one of the moves that uh, he had studied studied at home. It's it, it looks like a too powerful of a move to make over the board. Uh, yeah, but okay, it's basically giving up a pawn. Uh, you don't want to give white time to consolidate. The white king is still in the center. So you want to start developing pieces as soon as possible. So just giving up a pawn for the moment. Uh, uh, and you have to capture with the pawn as the knight is stuck covering the e4 pawn. So we have uh, c captures on b5 and now bishop to b7, putting pressure on the e4 pawn. Uh, we have queen to b3 now. Levon says, okay, I'm going to capture on e6 with check. So now even if you even if you try something like uh, knight captures here, it's not going to work because after all the trades, I'm just going to deliver check and pick up your piece uh, on e4. Uh, so here... While Magnus could go for queen to e7, uh, he prefers king to h8. He invites uh, uh, Levon to capture on e6, but it wouldn't be all that great. It's uh, it's interesting, but after queen captures on e6 and the knight captures on e4, now again, uh, it, it doesn't work. Knight captures here and now rook to e8. Now white is the one that gets uh, uh, troubled with a piece hanging on e4. So after the queen moves, you're just going to capture the knight. Or you can go for this knight the g5 idea, which is now queen captures, rook captures on e6, knight f7 check, forks the king and the queen, and after the king moves, now you capture and the rook captures here. Where you get this position, uh, where white would be up a pawn, but it's a doubled b pawn, and uh, well, your, your bishop is hanging on e3, your pawn is hanging on g2, black would definitely be better here. So instead, after this king to h8 move by Magnus, bishop to f3 first, adding another defender to the pawn here. And now Magnus just gets rid of the weak pawn by pushing, the, pushing it to e6, e5. Uh, we have knight to h3 by Levon, defending on f4. Uh, and now knight to h5 by Magnus, uh, adding another attacker to the f4 square. Also, the knight can jump to g3 if needed. And here, Levon makes a very concrete decision. He decides to capture on h5. Uh, we have g captures and now push the pawn all the way to f5. And now if Magnus will un will be unable to push d5, uh, then this uh, white structure should be, should be excellent. And also, uh, the pawn on h4 that seems to be hanging, uh, if Magnus goes for it, he would actually... Uh, be in a pretty bad position because after knight f2 you defend check you also guard the rook and once the queen moves you will pick up the h5 pawn the queen has no squares 
uh, from where uh, the queen can defend the pawn. So you're just going to have to go back, queen to e7. Now you pick up the pawn here. And now, well, with the queen slicing all, all the way to g8, the rook attacking h7, you can castle queen side, you can bring the other rook over to h1. It, it would just be a, uh, too good of a position for white. Uh, so after this f5 move by 11, we have knight to f6 by Magnus. And now knight to f uh, uh, knight to f2. Uh, also knight to g5, you could try that, but you're not uh, coming to e6 anytime soon, uh, since after queen to e7, now it would be it would be pointless because the e4 pawn is hanging. So it it, it is possible, but it requires a, a, a much more uh, deciding than than what Levin invested. So Levin has a different plan. Knight to f2, just add another defender to the pawn here. And now a6. Magnus wants to give up the a6 pawn as well to further activate his pieces. We have b6. Levin says uh, we're not going to free your rook just like that. So we have pawn captures, bishop captures with an attack on the queen. And now queen to d7. Uh, we have rook to d1. Again, Levin keeps, uh, keeps an eye on the d5 square. He does not want to let Magnus play uh, d5. We have rook a to c8. Uh, and now comes bishop back to e3 by Levin. And now h6. Uh, just making some room room for the king on h7. Uh, we have rook to h3, a very nice rook lift by Levin. Now the rook can come to g3 to put pressure on the position. You can also bring the rook to g6 to put pressure on the h6 pawn. You can go to f3 if you'll need it to defend the f5 pawn. Uh, a lot of good ideas here for the rook, and it's better than just a castle, uh, since you can always play some like king f1, king g1, and the king will be very safe there. So here Magnus takes this opportunity as the, now is, uh, the queen is nicely placed on uh, d7, attacking the f5 pawn to push d5. And now already you have a threat of d4, which would just win material. So Levin has to capture with e captures on d5. And now, yes, the queen is attacking the f5 pawn, but also the white queen is attacking the b7 bishop. So first bishop back to, b, bishop back to a8. Now uh, capturing is definitely a threat. Uh, rook to f3 by Levin, defending it, and now rook to b8. Also, by playing bishop to a8, uh, you free the b file for the rook. Queen back to c2, and now rook f to c8. So, uh, activating both both the rooks for the temporary pawn sacrifice. Or maybe not a temporary pawn sacrifice. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, we have queen to e2 by 11, unpinning, and also preparing to move the rook and uh, go after the h5 pawn. Uh, but we have queen to f7, adding another defender to the h5 pawn. Uh, we have queen to d2, now attacking the h6 pawn. Uh, but Magnus just defends, king to h7. Uh, but now everything is uh, perfectly set, and Levin goes knight f to e4. And now he's threatening just knight d6 to win material. So Carlsen trades once, knight captures, captures, and now rook to d8, guarding the d6 square. But now Levin can finally push f6, opening up this very important diagonal towards the, towards the black king. Bishop to f8 and now queen to c2, threatening some very nasty discoveries like knight to g5 check, picking up the queen for example, as it would be a double check. So king to h8, Magnus unpins and now knight back to c3, consolidating, uh, putting another defender to the d5 pawn. And now uh, Levin will have to choose between some very good options on how to continue the game. And Magnus has to do the same. Here Magnus could go for captures on d5. It's, it, it is uh, a possibility, but he would have to trade down into a, an unfavorable uh, position. For example, if bishop captures, rook captures, rook captures, knight captures, we have queen captures on d5, and now b3. And you get the disposition, but it would just be very hard to play. For example, if rook d8, not allowing the queen uh, to leave the defense of the d1 square, king e2, and now after e4, attacking the rook, rook f4. You put pressure on the pawn here, and here black would, for example, trade queens, captures, captures, you would go king d2, and now it's just a better position. Uh, for white, since, uh, well, these two pawns are weak, you can very easily win this pawn, uh, so... Uh, it's just, just a better position for white, if not winning. So here, uh, Magnus uh, doesn't go for it. His best chances is his best chance to survive this game is to just complicate the position as much as possible. So he goes rook before with ideas of rook captures on h4, rook h1 check, maybe uh, stirring some trouble there. Levin just defends it. Queen to f2, and now bishop captures on d5. Now bishop captures on d5 is a bit different because the black queen is uh, the white queen is not on such an active square. So here, if you trade it captures, captures, uh, captures, and captures, you would get to this position where it's black who's who's very much active and white white not so much. White is still better, 
uh, but uh, Le Levon doesn't like uh, like uh, th that he can push for more here. So instead, after bishop captures on d5, uh, uh, now the rook is under attack. You still can't capture the rook because uh, the rook on d8 would be hanging. But still, best for Levon is just rook to f5 here. Put some pressure on that h5 pawn, maybe you can uh, attack it with the queen next and just uh, start uh, mounting the pressure and get the rook away from the f3 square. But here uh, Levon saw uh, the opportunity for, uh, for a very nice idea and he played bishop to c5. Bishop to c5 uh, gives Magnus a chance to, to wiggle out of, of a terrible position, so feel free to pause the video and try to find why, uh, what Magnus played to, to successfully wiggle out of this position while I give you a couple of seconds. Uh, so for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding such a such a nice idea. It's not an easy move to find. Uh, you have to you know combine a few of the ideas that we've already mentioned. So basically, Levon's idea uh, is after Bishop to c5 that uh, uh, well, if Bishop captures, your rook is under attack. So that's uh, that's the first uh, thing there is. So after Bishop captures, Queen captures. Now your rook will be under attack, and also there will be a triple attack on the bishop here. So your only option to uh, to defend against both is rook to d4 to, to somehow prevent both threats but it doesn't really work because rook captures pawn captures and then now just knight captures on d5 rook captures on d5 and now okay it's queen and rook against the queen and rook but you have queen to c8 check king to h7 and now rook g3 and white wins the game there is no defense against rook to g7 which will win the queen and of course if you eliminate the f6 pawn then queen g8 is just mate so that was Levon's plan when he played bishop to c5, but he missed the move Magnus played, and congratulations to everyone who found it, which is rook to d4. Rook to d4 is an awesome move, because now Magnus is saying, uh, okay, uh, your rook on d1 is under attack, I'm threatening just rook captures check, and then I'm going to pick up your rook here, because now <laughs> bishop captures on f3 is a threat, uh, because you cannot go through both rooks to pick up uh, material on d8. So here, Levon really doesn't have a better move uh, other than capturing the rook, which is what he does. He plays bishop captures on d4, we have bishop captures on f3 by Magnus, g captures, and then now e captures on d4. We have rook captures on d4, and now uh, everything is nicely traded down. Magnus could capture on f6 and keep an eye on the rook here, but he decides that uh, better chances are rook to b8. Just leaving that f6 pawn where it is. Uh, but he misses a very, very nice move by Levon, which is queen to h2. Uh, he moves the queen, unpins, and prepares to centralize the queen. Uh, and now any uh, queen captures on f6 by attacking the rook are impossible because the rook on b8 is hanging. So here rook to b6, but now Levon gets the knight into the game. Knight to d5. Attacks the rook while the f6 pawn is defended, and now he keeps his very strong passed f6 pawn. We have queen to e6 by Magnus with check. Queen e2, left 11 offers a queen trade, and Magnus declines it. And it's... Uh, uh, he declines it with with a very with a beautiful resource uh, queen to g8. He offers a rook on b6 because now if you capture the rook, he has uh, queen g1 check, which connects with the rook but also with the knight. And here Levon would have to accept a draw with queen f1 and queen to e3 check. Now you cannot move the king anywhere. Uh, sorry, not that, but you can go uh, king to d1 because a rook falls with check, and then you also pick up the knight. So then Carlson would be just winning. So here you would ex uh, you would have to accept. A, a draw by threefold repetition after a, a series of checks. So after queen to g8, Levon sees that uh, the rook is off limits. He goes king to f1, but now rook to e6. Magnus now attacks the queen, and here uh, both of them were very low on time, and uh, Levon didn't just move the queen. For example, queen to h2 is a, is a reasonable move, uh, but Levon found uh, an even nicer uh, move. He played f7. Uh, which is kind of weird as it gives up a very strong passed f6 pawn, but uh, Levon uh, finds a very nice combination. Queen captures on f7 and now rook to f4. So this is just a beautiful move because now the rook is under attack, the queen is under attack, and if the queen moves, then you are no longer guarding the rook. But if you move too far away from the defense of the bishop, then the bishop is also under attack. So here, uh, the point point of uh, point point of everything is that if Magnus goes for the queen trade, rook captures, rook captures, then your rook is under attack and also your bishop is under attack. So if you go rook to e8 to defend both, now knight to f6 wins for Levon because the rook is under attack and also uh, rook to h7 is the threat of mate, so you cannot defend against both threats. 
Uh, so uh, after rook to f4, uh, Magnus finds again a, a brilliant move, uh, queen to g6. He gives up the bishop on f8 with check. We have rook captures on f8 and now king to g7. Uh, now uh, the queen is under attack, queen has to move, we have queen to d1, uh, defending the knight, and now king captures on f8. So for the moment Magnus is up the exchange, but only for the moment. Knight to f4, attacks the queen and the rook, uh, we have queen to e8, and now knight captures rook. We have queen captures on e6, and now queen to d8, check. And we enter this endgame, where Levon is up a pawn, uh, but it, it's a queen and pawn endgame, and we already saw how difficult queen and pawn endgames are in, in the same championship, in the same Grand Chester finals uh, between Ding and MVL. So, king to f7, we have queen to c7 check, king to e8, and now queen to b8 with check. We have king to d7 by Magnus, and queen to b7 check. King to d8, Magnus is very, very happy with a draw here. Uh, this is the last classical game, he's most likely the last classical game he's playing in the in, in uh, 2019, and uh, so far he hasn't lost a single game in 2019, so he would m very much enjoy not losing this game. Uh, so queen b8 check, king d7, we have queen to a7 check, and king back to e8. We have b3 now, Levon gives Magnus a move, but now queen to h3 with check. Now Magnus will pick up the h4 pawn. Uh, we have king to e2 and queen captures on h4. With this, Magnus created uh, the past h pawn. We have queen, uh, now not going for a6, Levon waits for that. He first wants to push a4, a5. Uh, a4 and b4, uh, so the pawns will uh, get a bit closer. So queen to b8 check, first king e7, and now queen to c7 with check. King to f8, uh, he has to play and moves quickly because both of them are very low on time. Queen c5 check, king g7, and now queen to e5 with check. King to g8, uh, and now a4. Uh, we have queen to h1. And now uh, queen to b8 with check. King f7 and now queen to f4 with check. King to e8, we have queen to b8 with check and now king to d7. Queen to a7 with check, king to d8 and now queen to d4 with check. King to e8 and now queen to e5 with check. So uh, playing moves, uh, hoping to, to, to get an idea without wasting too much time. Uh, king d7, queen to d4 with check, king to e8 and now b4. Now Magnus gets a move, queen g2 check, we have queen to f2, offering a trade, of course you cannot afford a queen trade, queen to g5 and now f4. Uh, we have queen to d5 and now queen e3 check, king to f7 and now queen to a7 with check. King to e8, you don't want to go to the 6th rank so you don't lose the a6 pawn with check. And now queen to c5, again offering a queen trade, and if the queen moves you can pick up uh, the h5 pawn. But queen to a2 check, now Magnus connects this with the a4 pawn, king to f3, and now queen captures on a4. Uh, queen captures on h5, and now it's a queen and pawn endgame with two pawns each, now this is a, this is a dead draw. King e7 was played, queen e5 check. Uh, king to f7, and now queen d5 check. King g7, queen d4 check. King to f7 and queen d5 check. King g7, queen d4 check, and after king f7, the players agree to a draw here. Or basically, it's a it's a threefold repetition, maybe either 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 of those. Uh, but uh, I'm sure they would agree to a draw, even even if it is a draw by a threefold repetition. So. Really insane stuff, Levon really played beautifully, uh, he almost had him, almost uh, uh, ruined <laughs> Carlsen's good year by, uh, you know, uh, by uh, beating him the last game he, he had. Uh, prior to this game he had a 106 games unbeaten streak and with this game he is now on a on a 107 games unbeaten streak. And it's 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 bad luck for Levin because now he has to go into rapid games being down six points as he lost the first game to Magnus, but you know, he still has chances. Though there are two more rapid games and four more blitz games, so anything can happen. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, basically the game. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, really, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, if you've been if you've been watching the the live coverage, for example, on, on Chess Twenty Four with Peter Swidler, uh, Swidler often often says that Levon Levon's skills in Blitz are godlike. So uh, we're gonna we're we're definitely gonna see what happens there. Uh, as uh, it's chess, anything can happen. Uh, but yeah, Magnus definitely now the huge favorite, and he ends the year by being undefeated, which is which is awesome stuff. Uh, 
Uh, last time he lost, uh, le last time he lost uh, was in 2018 in July. Uh, I'm sure you all know uh, who he lost to. Uh, we already discussed it a few times, but just in case you don't, uh, feel free to, to check out the comments below because I'm sure a lot of people will mention it. So that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Braxton Reynolds and Juan Vincente Alvarez for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Grandchester Finals, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and starting the next big saga. So th thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your Sunday and do be a part of the subscribers video 2020. See you soon.